You must have seen this gigantic looking formula called the Taylor series in high school, but never really understood the real meaning behind it. Let's begin the cosine function. What if I asked you to find a polynomial version of function that kind of looks like the cosine function? Feel free to pause and ponder. We will later explore why this polynomial approximation of a function is necessary and how they are obtained. But first, let me give a visual intuition behind the series. Picture this. Graphing f of x equals 1 results a line parallel to the x-axis. Let's introduce another term, say being a downward parabola. You might observe that the curve starts approximating the cosine function around values close to zero. Add in another term and the approximation becomes better. If we keep adding more and more terms like this, the polynomial function almost equals the cosine function. The same goes for the functions like sine of x and e to the x. You might be wondering how we came to know the specific polynomials for the functions, right? Let's take example of cosine function to understand this. We want a duplicate polynomial version of cos x, say p of x. Our motive is to find coefficients that make p of x exactly look like cosine of x. The cosine function is 1 at x equals 0. If p of x is supposed to look like cosine function, it should also behave the same, right? Plugging in x equals 0, all terms gets 0 except a naught, which must be 1 to resemble f of x. Now, how do we find other coefficients then? Notice this. If we find the first derivative of p of x, the next term e1 becomes 3 of x. And plugging x equals 0, all other term vanishes except a1. Since the first derivative of cos x at x equals 0 is 0, first derivative of p of x also should be 0. So, the main idea is that we make the coefficients free of x finding higher derivatives and then plug in x equals 0. Derivatives of cos x at x equals 0 are also evaluated parallelly and equated with p of x to determine new coefficients. These coefficients are then inserted into the original polynomial function to finally get the polynomial version of cos x. You might notice the denominator terms are actually factorials of the powers, which will make more sense to you when we go further for our general proof. And another important thing to notice is all powers are even. This makes sense because cos x is an even function and replacing x with negative x doesn't affect the functional value. Similarly, we can find polynomial version of any function f of x. Let's say we want our f of x to look like this. This particular infinite series is called the power series. This series can be mathematically represented as, say, we want to find coefficient a n. The idea is that Expression containing an should be made free from x. So we find the n derivative of the function which equals this and other term containing x. If you plug in 0, all terms become 0 and only term remaining is an with some numbers multiplied it to the front. And the multiplied numbers are nothing but n factorial. And there you have it, the coefficient for any an. Replacing this expression for a n in the summation, we get the expression for the f of x. But wait, this doesn't match the expression we saw at the starting of the video, does it? If we plug in a equals to 0, then we get this expression, which is actually referred to as the Maclaurin series, a special case for the Taylor series. Now, let's try to figure out what that a signifies. Let's revisit this animation. You might see the expansion starts from x equals 0. And the point remains stationary. This is where the approximation starts and is hence called the point of expansion. We can start this expansion from any other point A. As we are shifting A units to the right, x is replaced by x minus A. 
and to make the terms vanish, we substitute a at n derivatives of the function. Why we will want our expansion to start from other point a? This is important because when we are estimating the values of functions at specific points, it's crucial to choose a point of expansion where functional values are known, as it simplifies the calculation and the series converges more rapidly. For example, while seeking the value of cos 4, it's more effective to begin expanding from pi using the Taylor series rather than the Maclaurin series. This is because expanding around pi is closer to the desired value of 4 and converges more quickly. Additionally, the value of cos pi is well known, negative 1, making the interpretation easier. Let us further illustrate this concept using this Python program. So, the first function we have is d cos, which evaluates n derivative of cosine function at a. The underlying logic behind the function is the recurrence nature of higher derivatives of the cos function. The first derivative of cos is minus sine of x, second minus cos x, third sine x, and fourth cos x back to the original function. The fifth derivative is same as first derivative, the sixth same as second and so on. Therefore, we take modulo. For instance, when n modulo 4 equals 1, it computes negative sine of a. Similarly, for n modulo 4 equals 2, it computes negative cosine of a and so on. The other function Maclaurin AXP approximates the cosine function centered at 0. As you can see, the parameter a is being substituted by 0 in the d cos function within it. Similarly, another function Taylor AXP evaluates the approximation centered around pi. Both functions continue the approximation process until the calculated value falls below a predefined threshold, referred to as epsilon. For this scenario, precision to three decimal process is desired, hence epsilon is set to 0.001. Upon completion, both functions return the calculated values along with the number of iterations required for the approximation. Let's put this concept into practice. We will store the results from Maclaurin and Taylor series in variables 1 and 2 respectively, and record the number of iterations in count 1 and 2. Upon execution of the program, we observe that Maclaurin series takes 50 iterations to approximate the value, whereas Taylor series accomplishes the same task in only 5 iterations.